and welcome back everyone let's do this really well this is the third day only of the fast track course that we are looking at ca inter tax fast track course we have started off with gst the last two days we have revised every possible concept including questions from the module as well so today's session is going to be just a wrap up on the exemptions whatever exemptions remain we'll wrap those up we will look at the module for questions from exemptions chapter and then we will keep on doing mcqs rtps exam papers whatever we can for the rest of the time today that's the agenda i hope everyone's well i hope everyone's enthu about doing this let's do this guys so first up let's tackle the exemptions um, i'm just going to see which exemptions we've already done so we've covered a couple of exemptions already let's see which we've already covered we've covered unincorporated associations we've covered artist so we've already covered unincorporated associations we've already covered performance of an artist so what remains is entry tickets we will do that what remains is um etc miscellaneous we will do that we've already covered passenger transport services we've already covered goods transport services we've already covered legal services we've already covered business facilitator and bank correspondent we've already covered healthcare services we've already covered charitable and religious trusts agriculture i think is also covered yesterday so we've also covered agriculture services so in today's session we will cover entry we will cover etc we will cover government services services provided by the government and services received by the government we will do leasing services we will do uh, construction services we will do um, yeah i think these and more whatever remains we will do all of them so let's start with entry so this is what we are looking at exemptions and in that entry to events education also yes very important education also is remaining we will do all of these before we move ahead don't worry guys in education so first let's do ex exceptions uh, exemption sorry we are first looking at entry into events guys whenever you meet your friends they will always ask you especially when you meet them on a day like monday they will always ask you hey listen what did you do over the weekend yeah so you tell them nothing much i went to a wildlife tiger zoo so national monuments nothing much wildlife reserves tiger reserves and zoos the entry is completely exempt yes completely exempt no gst at all and the other weekend again they asked you what did you do so you told them that tdc there was a theater the dance company presents planet sports so you basically were busy going for this event tdc presents planet sports what is this guys all these events like theater like dance like concerts and circus but theater dance and concerts have to be you know what guys indian classical they cannot be western classical so theater dance and concerts indian classical in c there is also another c circus presents is basically you present awards or award ceremonies planetarium and sports by recognized sporting bodies these are basically exempt up to a certain limit of 500 so this is entry please remember entry into theater dance concerts indian classical only circus award ceremonies planetariums and sport events up to recognized sporting bodies have to organize it up to 500 rupees is exempt so if you go for an ipl match and if you go above 500 rupees there will be gst up to 500 rupees no gst next let's do education next education is very very important uh, an exemption and we will see exam questions also on this including a december question on education guys first what are educational institutions they say that educational and you know guys education has to be cheap because if education is not cheap then how will government how will the people study how will the people grow in life so education has a lot of exemption just one second
all right so as education has a lot of exemptions let's first see what are education institutions guys the pre school that you went to before your school the school that you went to up to higher secondary that is up to 12th standard the colleges that you are right now in or you have gone to or and vocational uh, courses or vocational colleges all these are educational institutions so educational institutions are all these let's see what all are exempt any education services or any services actually provided to students faculty and staff any services provided to students faculty and staff they are exempted so services provided to students faculty and staff guys i request you all to be a little patient with your questions first understand if you have any questions write it at the end because please understand first and then write the questions be with an open mind and try and understand first so if a school provides services to its students or to its faculty or to its staff it is exempt yes it is exempt if they are conducting an exam example iits conduct their cat exam or ct exam or iit jee then those exams to anyone not to students faculty staff but to everyone is exempt next when you have boarding schools where they provide you education plus they provide you food and stay it is a composite supply where it's naturally bundled and the principal supplies education so as the entire boarding will be exempt any vocational training courses what is vocational training where they teach you how to do carpentry etc uh, hardware computer hardware but of course only approved guys the key word here i'll give you a pro tip any education service which is an approved by the government is always exempt so vocational training courses is also exempt many years back the government started industrial training institutions they are basically milder versions of iits and these when approved by the government uh, government iits or approved iits they are also exempt when you have maritime courses what are maritime courses which basically teach you how to sail how to be a captain on a ship and they are approved that is also exempt so these are some things that are exempt next even iim when they have long duration courses that is one year or more long duration is also exempt so these are all outward supplies and they are all exempt these are different different courses as besides this national skill development corporation when they provide services of skill development that is also exempt so while these are exempt it is very interesting to know which all are not exempt so i'm writing here in the corner which all are taxable guys any private coaching is always and always taxable and that's the reason an academy when they charge you a fee that is subject to gst any foreign courses are taxable example your cfa your acca all those there will be gst on that but guys if there is a school which has ib education school which has ib education what is ib just like you have cbsc icsc ssc we have ib board also ib is international board but that is exempt because the school is in india only only the board the method of teaching is international so that is exempt remember that's a good exception next i am short duration courses which are basically lower lesser than 1 year are taxable next any hobby classes example you join a guitar class you join uh, any other class hobby classes are taxable guys unless a hobby class is in your school i remember in my school there was a singing class i don't know why they were teaching uh, i was in a boys school so why they were teaching boys how to sing but we had a boys uh, singing class in class in my in our classes and um, that was with the education so hence that was exempt because it was composite supply main thing we went to school is not for singing but for education next um in this um, any other things besides that guys anything which is unapproved anything which is not designated anything which is unapproved that all is taxable not designated unapproved is all taxable all right now now let's go to the main part input services this is your preschool and your school okay yes placement services guys when they place you and they charge you some money for placement or they charge company some money for placement that is taxable all right 
Now this is your play school or your school. Now is when they provide. This is now the input services. All inputs are taxable. Yes. If a play school or a school installs an AC, will they pay GST on that AC? Yes, they will pay GST on that AC. So all inputs are also taxable. Yes, all inputs are taxable. But there are three inputs for play school and schools which are not taxable. Which ones are those? TCS. any services received for transportation example you went to school by a bus school bus they was to pick you up and drop you home and pick you up from home and drop you back guys that is transportation that bus was provided by a bus company to your school that service so that bus company will charge your school but they will not charge any gst so transportation every school had a canteen which we used to love guys canteen food that and security which includes housekeeping those services when provided within the school it is exempt catering housekeeping security within the school transportation from school to office of uh, school to home and back but what about catering outside on a sports day what about transportation for a picnic then in that case that will be taxable next this tcs is only exempt for preschool and school up to higher secondary Next for colleges, hey guys, any colleges like your degree colleges, law, B Com, B B B B A, etc. All these colleges, when they get services for online education, online journal, etc., that will be exempt. Yes, that is exempt. So one one for both. Yes, for preschool and school, it's TCS. For our colleges, is online. One one for both, and the common input for both. Is any exam related services? any exam related services is there a lag okay i'll wait i'll wait is it better now guys let me know is it better now All right. Hopefully it's better now. Hopefully it's better now. Okay, perfect. So guys, play preschool or school they provide TCS services and anything which is college like your BCom, your BBA, your BA, any approved degree under the government's approval. So all those approved degrees, when they get any online journal, online education, that is also exempt. This is one one for each. And now the common service, guys. when your school or your college or your preschool anywhere organize an exam ici also when they organize an exam they have a paper setter paper checker paper um, uh, invigilators hall rent etc all those exam related services are exempt only services yes so if the school has bought paper that is not service that is goods but if they have paid some invigilators to invigilate the exam that is a service that is exempt yes these are three and only three things that are exempt tcs services online services education etc online journals and exam related services these are the only three things that are exempt everything else is taxable guys don't worry when we look at sums you will understand this kind of concept so just recapping guys anything which is private anything which is foreign anything that is im short duration anything that is hobby anything not registered unapproved any placement services are all taxable but anything which is near of the hour like your preschool school college vocational courses maritime courses iti's vocational courses exam boarding im long duration nsdc national skill development corporation all these are all these are exempt and remember inputs remember tcs remember online and re remember exam related services only now guys a question comes in your exam the school has provided catering to outsiders that will be taxable only to students faculty and staff only to sfs perfect so that is entry and that is education done next do let's do a very easy one something that i really enjoy leasing services Guys, in case of leasing, there is a change of the Finance Act 2021 has changed something. So I'll tell you what has changed. Leasing, there were two leasing. One is if there is a long-term lease of more than 30 years, 
if there is a long term lease of more than 30 years for designated purposes which is which is basically what are the de designated services manufacturing or finance and if long term lease is given for that then this is exempt example in your city maybe there is an area like in bombay there is an area called bkc bandra kurla complex where all the big banks etc are there so those basically land is leased out and there are government bodies which lease out the land local authorities which lease out the land to business entities but this will be exempt yes there will be no gst but the designated use has to be seen it should be for those designated purposes if this use is changed and let's say they use it for something else then in that case there will be gst earlier guys there was a small change earlier if the indian railway finance corporation that used to lend that was leasing all the railway wagons etc that you see actually not owned by indian railways they are leased out by some other railway company to the com to railways that used to be exempt earlier now that has been removed that's a change by the finance act 2021 so Indian Finance Railway Corporation, basically the com name of the company does not matter. It's a government company which used to basically lease out to railways, Western Railway, Indian Railway, Southern Railway, and that used to be exempt earlier. Now their exemption has been removed. Very simple, leasing services is, that is leasing. Next guys, insurance services. Very important and very, very, very interesting Le insurance services on the next slide. Guys, insurance can be tackled into two parts. One is life insurance, which we will discuss first. The first is life insurance. If you take a life insurance so that your family gets money when you are no more, that is taxable. Yes, life insurance is always taxable. So if you go to HDFC life and you take the life insurance policy of one crore, so if something happens to you, your family gets one crore, then in that case, will it be taxable? Yes, it will be taxable. But there are some life insurances which are exempt. So what are the exempt ones? Let's talk about exempt ones. Guys, your life is precious, but even more precious is people in the armed forces. So if there are armed forces people who get insurance from the government and they pay premium, they don't have to pay GST on that. Same way police forces also, but not private insurance. The government has their own insurance. Even police forces also pay a premium for their insurance. Again, that is exempt. There is no GST on that. And mainly guys, there is a product called micro life insurance. What is a micro life insurance? A micro life insurance is basically a small insurance policy. It does not a very big amount. So only if micro life insurance is up to two lakhs, guys, it should be micro and it should be maximum two lakhs of some assured. That means if something happens to you, your family will get maximum two lakhs. This kind of policy is also exempt because this is for the masses and hence this has also been exempt. So remember life insurance and in life insurance mainly armed forces, police forces are exempt and micro life insurance is exempt. I'll give you a pro tip guys. In insurance, anything that is private is always taxable. Anything which is approved by the government etc is all exempt. This is life insurance. The next insurance is general insurance. General insurance means your health insurance, your house insurance, your factory insurance. So those are general insurance. Now, as you want a health insurance so that when you fall sick, you don't have to pay hospital bills. So the, all those insurances are also taxable. Yes, your house insurance, your health insurance, your fire insurance, your car insurance, your bike insurance, all that is taxable. Exemptions are as under. Guys, here, please note some very, very important exemptions here first guys if any of the needy people example tribal insurance example women self-help group insurance example palm tree insurance example crop insurance all these you need you see they are actually the needy people needed tribal people women self-help groups palm tree insurance crop insurance your cattle insurance, your cows and your buffaloes and your horses can also be insured. So your cattle, not buff uh, horses, but cattle insurance, your goats, your cows, your buffaloes can also be insured, cattle insurance, that is also exempt. But here, there is a scheme called the export, export guarantee scheme, where 
if you don't get the money from when you export goods and you don't get the money the insurance company will pay you that insurance is also exempt please remember that so these will be very easy to identify in the exam but only remember there is a export promotion corporate guarantee where they give you a guarantee if you export and you don't get the money don't man, don't worry but this doesn't sound like it's needed but for export benefits it's given and hence that is exempt so exporters the government really likes them and hence they give an exemption for this insurance so insurance premium you'll have to pay definitely but you won't have to pay gst on that all right so that's how this is seeing more on this just a minute just a second guys perfect so this is insurance guys remember when you take an insurance example when i have taken an insurance from hdfc life they do something called reinsurance they also further insure themselves with a reinsurance company so if my insurance is taxable even the reinsurance is taxable example if i have taken an insurance policy which is taxable even my reinsurance is taxable but if you have taken a micro life insurance which is exempt even the reinsurance will be exempt so reinsurance works in the same way as insurance so this is also done now looking at construction services guys in case of construction services see in india everyone doesn't have their own house you can see a lot of construction around but the government says that everyone should have their own house and for that they have these yojanas atal awas yojana any awas awas means house yojana so under any government scheme let's say the government has a scheme that every person should have a house a small house but every person should have a have a, have a house and under that yojana you are a construction company and you are constructing a house for the government so that they can give it ahead to someone the government doesn't want this service to be expensive so hence if it's a pure labor contract pure labor means not cement not steel not uh, bricks only labor component will be exempt so as a construction company to construct this house will you charge the government 1 lakh rupees yes but there will be no gst only on the labor part what about the cement what about all of, on that there will be gst so only on the labor part this is exempt why because on these yojanas the government doesn't want it to be expensive next very interesting again this is other than the yojana but again a construction company is planning to construct your house guys if you want to build a nice small house in the village you will ask a construction company or a contractor to con construct your house and if he gives you labor again for the labor only pure labor contracts are exempt but this house should be an independent house that means it should not be a part of a complex so if your if your house is part of a complex no it should be an independent house not a flat an independent house the construction only the labor is exempt so will the construction charge you construction company or contractor charge you 5 lakh rupees for construction yes but on that there will not be any uh, uh, gst it will be exempt why again guys either under the government scheme or whether on your own if you are if you are planning to build a house that the government feels nice about it and they exempt it only pure labor contracts what if with labor there is cement also steel also bricks also on that there is gst next guys every farmer should get access to good water you know in india a lot of crops don't grow well because they don't have access to water so if this is your farm and there is a tube well which you want here constructed then for the tube well to work they need electricity so if you get a tower installed for electricity then that is also exempt that is also immovable property guys you need to construct a tower and that construction if someone provides that is also exempt all right and next guys in the next construction services this is for people who are building residential buildings with some amount of commercial space so this is mainly residential buildings if you are a if you are a construction company which is building mainly a residential complex but some commercial like 
the main building is there and then on the ground floor there are some shops so some commercial is okay i'll tell you the percentage also then in that case the government says we will give you a lot of benefits here are the benefits whenever you supply you can charge just a minimum gst of 2% on the flat guys you know when i sell a building there is no gst because this is immobile property but i'm selling construction services during construction is it a service that i'm selling yes in that case will there be gst yes then in that case it will just be 2% in case of affordable houses and 5% in other cases is that a great thing yes guys gst is generally 10% 12% 18% 28% 28%. I just ordered a phone today for someone in my office and we paid gst of 18% on that so but of course we can take a credit but these house owners will not be able to take credit so hence the government said listen if you're selling an affordable house then you will charge GST of only 2% and that too during the construction phase after construction you will not charge GST you know that guys and if it's other than affordable then you will charge GST of 5% these are the GST rates but if you want these rates there are some conditions what are the conditions first you will not get ITC you will not get any ITC why because you are charging just like a composition scheme guys you are charging your very low rate and hence you will not get ITC also you have to promise that you will buy 80% of all your inputs from registered persons so all 80% so in, in this case what for a construction company guys what are their inputs generally it's cement it's steel it's bricks it's labor so all your inputs, at least 80% of your inputs should be from registered persons. Yes, should be from registered persons so that the government gets GST and you can't take ITC. And what if it's less than 18, 80%? If it's less than 80%, then let's say you have taken 75% from registered person, 5% is not, then on that 5%, you will pay GST under RCM. And if it's cement, then you will pay GST under RCM at 28%. I'll repeat this once again. Guys, what are we talking about? Construction services, pure labor contracts under government contracts, Avas Yojana is exempt. Other pure labor contracts for independent houses is also exempt. Wells, tube wells for that electricity, tower construction is also exempt. But the main thing is this, this is important. If you're a normal construction company and you're building a complex or building a single building and you're selling houses, if you finish the construction and you sell anyways, there is no GST. But if you sell during the construction phase, you can charge GST of 2% for affordable houses and 5% for other houses. But so less rate, the government is losing out on GST, yes, but because there are some conditions. You cannot take any ITC. Whatever you are purchasing, at least 80% should be from registered persons. That means registered persons will charge you GST and you can't take ITC, so the government is happy. And if there is any shortfall of that 80%, then you will have to pay GST on the RCM. And in case shortfall is of cement, then you have to pay GST at the rate of 28%. So this ensures that you are buying from registered persons, so the government gets GST. Guys, here, the commercial part and the residential part, the commercial cannot be more than 20% of the entire project. So if there is any project which has 1000 square feet, then only about 200 square feet can be commercial rest 800 has to be residential as this is construction services i don't think this is so important from an exam perspective this is more at ca final but still it's there so we discussed it this is construction services if you think about it logically what does this do this makes it cheaper for the buyers to buy houses and at the same time, the government doesn't lose out on revenue because they block your ITC. So you have to pay GST and it is blocked. Basically, you don't get any credit. That's the idea behind this. Just a second.
as if you are done with this let's go to the etc part and then then let's go to the government services part etc is basically a shortcut which is very very important because there are many small 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 exemptions that i've covered up in one go so here it is the shortcut very important shortcut guys you are going to nepal and bhutan for under 17 women's fifa congratulations on your holiday you are going to nepal and bhutan for under 17 women fifa guys this is a shortcut watch out while you are going there we are going to be going for long so what will you do there you will rent your residence you will rent your hotel and you have three vehicles which you will rent out so this is also exempt this is a whole list of exemption watch out you are renting your residence hotel and three vehicles next what do you see in nepal and bhutan you see that there are electric news satellites there are electric news satellites which are exhibiting tall animal food what did you see there guys there were electric news satellites which were exhibiting exhibiting means showing tall animal food and what else did you see there you saw that foreign regions have incubated incubated means started cold toilets and libraries cold toilets and libraries unfortunately guys this is a shortcut or fortunately this is a shortcut so let's see what all is exempt be with me so all these small 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 exemptions get over in this case guys if you sell your company on a going concern basis example electric bike company gets sold to hero honda or hero honda motors for 10 crore rupees on that 10 crores there is no gst so on a going concern basis it is exempt but what if you sell one truck then there will be gst so if you sell the entire entity on a going concern basis there will be no gst when you are transporting cargo to nepal and bhutan on the transport there will be no gst so you are transporting cargo on the transport to nepal and bhutan because they are neighboring countries they are very friendly countries so on that there will be no gst next under 17 women fifa guys on under 17 women fifa in this case also there will be no gst about couple of years back in india there was a under 17 women fifa that was proposed so what if we sell part see if you are selling on a going concern basis in the exam they say sold on a going concern basis then there is no gst but if they say that sold uh, one truck etc then there will be gst all right so these are three things on which there is no gst just one second guys i will just have to excuse myself for a minute and i'll be back as moving ahead renting guys what if you rent a residential property guys if you rent out a residential property for residence purpose then that is exempt not a service apartment it has to be a residence and it has to be used for residential purposes then only it will be exempt what about renting a hotel guys if you rent out a hotel room please very careful guys the hotel room should be less than or equal to 1000 Why is it so different? Because guys, in charitable organization, we had seen that it should be less than one thousand. Here, it should be less than or equal to one thousand. So in the exam, if they say hotel room rented for one thousand, exempt. But charitable organization rents a hotel room for one thousand, taxable. And very very important, three vehicles. Watch out. What are the three vehicles? First. If you rent out a goods vehicle, a goods transport vehicle to a goods transport agency, see the government doesn't want them to pay a lot of taxes. So when you rent out a goods vehicle or a goods carriages to a goods transport agency, this will be exempt. Will you charge them some money? Definitely, but will you charge them GST? No. So that's an advantage for goods transport. So if you are giving out goods transport goods uh, carriages to a goods transport agency on rent, then there will be it will be exempt. next second what if you are transporting sorry what if you are renting out an electric vehicle 
बट हु लाइक्स इलेक्ट्रिक वहीकल ओनली म्यूनसिपल अथॉरिटीज लाइक ओनली लोकल अथॉरिटीज ओनली म्यूनसिपल बॉडीज लाइक इलेक्ट्रिक वहीकल्स सो इफ यू आर गिविंग आउट एन इलेक्ट्रिक वहीकल टू अ म्यूनसिपल अथॉरिटी और अ लोकल अथॉरिटी देन ऑन दैट इट एग्जाम बट दट कैपेसिटी शुड बी मोर दैन ट्वेल्व इट शुड बी मोर दैन ट्वेल्व पैसेंजर्स सो अगेन आई रिपीट गुड्स कैरेजेस टू गुड्स ट्रांसपोर्ट एजेंसी इलेक्ट्रिक वहीकल टू म्यूनसिपल अथॉरिटीज और लोकल अथॉरिटीज ओनली येस and third any carriage any passenger transport vehicle any vehicle to a state transport undertaking so state transport undertaking does not want electric electric was only municipal or local authority but any vehicle to a state transport undertaking again the passenger should be more than 12 guys in block credit itc the passengers was more than 13 here it is more than 12 please try and identify these differences so here it is these are some subtle differences which you should be able to identify well again what are you renting residence what are you renting hotel which is less than or equal to 1000 what are you renting three vehicles what are the three vehicles goods uh, carriages to a goods transport agency electric vehicle to a local authority and any vehicle to a state transport undertaking but here the passenger should be more than 12 more than 12 Guys, I am giving you a question. You tell me. This is a house that you've rented out. The ground floor you've rented as a shop. The first floor you've rented as an office, and the third floor you've rented as a residence to one person only. And you are charging, let's say, five lakh rupees rent. Will it be taxable? Will it be exempt? Depends upon whether this is composite supply or is it mixed supply. Guys, this is clearly an example of mixed supply. because a residence and office a shop does not have to be rented out together so it is a classic example of mixed supply and in mixed supply guys this is exempt residence this is at 18% and this is at 18% so what will be the gst rate the gst rate will be 18% i hope you are understanding these questions guys let me know if there is any doubt i hope you are understanding this so renting the residence renting the hotel and renting three vehicles that was a question here so this one done yes and this one done next electric new satellites exhibiting tall animal food so let's try and see what is that first one electricity guys when you get electricity at home or in office wherever you get electricity the supply of electricity will the, the electricity company send you a bill yes but there will be no gst that is exempt after that guys any renting of the meter any repair of the meter any uh, replacement of that meter all that is taxable only the electricity supply will be exempt next any news and views let's say you are a reporter guys and bbc has approached you that listen whenever some actor goes out for dinner you have to take photographs and send it to them and you are charging them money will you charge them gst no because collection of news and views and sending it abroad is exempt yes so electric new satellites satellite launch services guys as you know india is very strategically located for launching satellites so if satellites are launched generally they are launched by isro or another body called antarik corporation or antarik corporation then that is exempt they charge money but they will not charge gst electric new satellites exhibit guys so exhibitions if you are organizing an exhibition which is abroad for an exhibition then it is exempt electric news satellites exhibited toll toll is actually toll any toll which you when you travel on the road highways you pay toll that is exempt next animal animal slaughtering unfortunately animals get slaughtered for skin meat etc that is exempt and any food testing guys not food food there is gst you always pay uh, gst on food but any food testing sampling etc is exempt so this is the list electricity news views and sending abroad satellite launch foreign exhibitions tolls animal slaughtering and food testing has been exempted by special notifications all right just a second before we move ahead perfect 
and the last sentence foreign regions incubated coal toilets and libraries so let's see what that is foreign regions first is any foreign embassies any foreign consulates any un offices etc when they provide services it's exempt as yesterday only we had done that they have to apply for a uin for taking refunds next foreign regions regions is rti right to information you have the right to get information from the government or from any other body there is a right to information act and in that there is a small fee that you have to pay but there is no gst because that has been exempted foreign regions incubated guys what is incubating incubating basically means to support so if the government supports any startup if the government supports any startup then up to 3 years and 50 lakh turnover that startup it has to be a technology startup and supported by the government then up to 3 years and up to 50 lakh turnover there will be no gst so the startup will supply goods and services yes but there will be no gst up to 3 years 50 lakhs next is cold not cold chain facility but cold chain knowledge giving out cold chain knowledge that will be exempt just one second giving out cold chain knowledge will be exempt next public toilets and public libraries will also be exempt public toilets and libraries will also be exempt all right so this is a whole huge list which is done and dusted and guys remember foreign regions embassies consulates un offices 11 of them because gst are 11 RTI act incubatory for 3 years cold chain knowledge public toilets and public libraries all of them have been exempted from gst i hope this is absolutely clear perfect guys let me know if any doubt if any questions right away before we move ahead so these are the etc ones which were done now is the government services and then we will be done with exemptions we'll open up the book for questions guys this is the government and as you know the government is very lazy let's try and revise what all the government is very lazy in guys whenever the government sells used goods guys i want your enthusiasm and your energy back don't slack don't slack icai does not reward people who slack you need to be on top of your game every day till your exams after that go into slumber mode for hours no problem but right now you need to be completely attentive when the government is selling used goods it is on rcm yes it is on rcm when the government is selling lottery is it on rcm yes this will also be on rcm when the government is renting immobile property to registered persons will this be under rcm yes this will also be in rcm and when they are giving any other services except pat pat will that be under rcm yes that will be under rcm now now we'll just have to clarify on what is pat pat is postage a is aviation that is any aircraft or vessel leasing and t is transportation that is transportation you know when you go by tram train first class you pay gst the government takes it and go pays it ahead so transportation we know aircraft and vessel leasing is perfectly okay but postage guys did you know when you go to the post offices sometimes you have to pay gst on the speed post that you made to icai did you pay gst yes you do so in postage it is taxable yes it is taxable except a very few things are exempt so let's see what all is exempt at a post office guys the basic mail services do you know the basic mail the basic mail now hardly people use that's a very slow post that service is exempt next banking the government wants you to do banking at post offices so banking is exempt that reminds us that we also have to do an exemption on banking just one second all right so basic mail services is exempt banking is exempt guys they also offer pension services that is also exempt so these other services that are exempt so if you send a speed post that is taxable yes 
so if you do pension provident fund there is exam bank banking basic banking is exam and basic mail services are exam others are taxable and taxable under fcm so how do you differentiate guys when the government provides services it is either exam example driving license your passport your aadhar card all those basic services are exam basics are exempt because that's the government's duty so hence those are exempt but if it is taxable it is mostly taxable under rcm very few taxes are under fcm which are those pat so think about government services guys most government services are exempt if taxable then rcm because they are very lazy and fcm is only 3 that is uh, pat yes banking includes money order also banking and money order also basic mail banking money order and pensions perfect guys this is on postal aviation vessel is not important transportation we've already covered goods transport and passenger transport now this is on outward supply guys does the government also give police protection yes if they give police protection will they charge some money yes guys it's a service it will be chargeable to tax generally yes it will be but when the government provides services to each other it will be exempt yes when the government provides services to each other it will be exempt example when the police is giving protection to the prime minister then it will be exempt maybe there is a charge but that will be exempt perfect and now guys input services to the government do you give services to the government if the government or if does the government buy goods yes the if the government buys an ac will they pay gst yes guys you will be surprised even if the government buys an ac they will pay gst so for a government also inputs are taxable but there are few inputs which are exempt let's see which are the inputs which are exempt first if they get let's say you want to change the street lights let's say your municipal authority in your area they want to change the street lights and they give a contract to someone to change the street lights if it's pure labor it is exempt and if it's labor with goods but the goods are up to 25% only maximum up to 25% goods then that is also exempt so again i repeat if it's pure labor contract that is someone is only going to come and change the street lights then that is exempt if it's labor plus goods but goods are only up to 25% even that will be exempt so there are two exemptions here just one second yes and if it's labor with goods of maximum 25% even that will be exempt we'll see more of this from uh, the book module guys we'll see more directly from the sums government sums there are some nice sums on government things and guys here here we will come to the next but more important thing that is banking everyone pay attention to banking this is banking exemptions very very important i am expecting a question on banking in your exam this year so let's see how this will be asked guys if we do discuss banking the first person we'll discuss is rbi when the rbi provides services example you want to report from rbi about how is retail banking in india rbi provides you with a report but they will charge you money but they will not charge you gst it is exempt so any services rbi is providing it is exempt but remember when rbi gets services there is gst if as a ca if i provide some services to rbi for some auditing accounting then i will charge gst so only on the outward services rbi that is exempt next when banks financial institutions and authorized dealers they provide services to each other in terms of forex example you are sbi bank you want dollars there is standard chartered bank who has dollars so you are going to buy it from a standard chartered bank on that transaction of currency obviously on currency there is no gst but on the service also exchange of forex there will be no gst it will be exempt next when banks provide any services guys why why do you go to the bank for generally you go to open an account then generally you put money 
they pay you interest on the interest by whatever name called interest can be called finance charges it can be called bill discounting by whatever name called interest finance charges bill discounting it is all exempt so what is taxable then guys any credit card interest is taxable so this could be a very very good exception interest finance charges discounting is all exempt except credit card interest is taxable guys when you take a loan from a bank money there is no gst but the processing fees if the exam gives you or uh, things like processing fees service charges brokerage all that there is tax so yes so i'm just going to cancel this out i'm just going to write it here any services any brokerage any fee on that it is taxable yes it is taxable next when they provide services when banks provide services in relation to bsbda accounts what are bsbda accounts basic saving and bank deposit account guys before the draconian and the dangerous demonetization they had started a jan dhan yojana where they asked everyone to open bank accounts and we are we did not know why they are asking us to open bank accounts that those many accounts were called basic saving and bank deposit account these are very basic accounts nothing fancy and when the banks provide services this will be exempt other services are taxable but basic service and bank deposit account these services will be exempt next guys you know when a business facilitator or a bank correspondent when they provide services to rural branches we have already done that they those will be exempt and guys whenever you go and you swipe your card let's say you go shopping for a t-shirt and you swipe your card for 1200 rupees the bank settles the account with their trader so you just have to swipe and the bank handles it on that up to 2000 rupees swipe there is no charge there is no there is charge but there is no gst but above 2000 on card transactions transactions greater than 2000 sorry transaction up to 2000 per transaction is exempt and that's the reason when you go to some shops they say listen if you're going to swipe your card we'll charge you a small percentage extra that is what is banking and financial services IFSC is not there for your exam yet so don't worry about it just one second perfect so this is how it is now guys i'm opening up the module and let's do the exemptions from the module here we go here are exemptions under gst perfect loading them and let's solve first we'll go to the main things and then we'll also go to the illustrations but here are the main things perfect first question guys please read discuss the validity of the statement please read and tell me if the statement is valid yes exempt supply includes 3 ns nil rate non taxable as well as exempt through notification absolutely right this statement is perfectly valid next services provided by an entity which is registered under 12a that means a registered charitable or religious association now this section has changed to 12a b but doesn't matter this we'll see at ca final are they exempt from gst if such services are provided by way of charitable activities elaborate the term charitable activities there are four charitable activities guys do you remember h e e r healthcare which basically includes terminally ill patients aids patients uh, hiv patients etc education skill development skill development for people above 65 in rural areas Ed uh, environment wildlife and forest and religion spirituality and yoga excellent next please see examine which of the following 
are exempt from GST overtage oil A and B guys. Please check and please answer. The first one, food supplied by the canteen run by a hospital to inpatients, definitely exempt. A resident welfare association collects maintenance charges of 6,500, exempt up to 7,500. Nice people who are participating, good job. People who are understanding, good job. You need to understand all these really well. Guys, here we missed out on one small thing. In the etc. part, I'll tell you right now only. Recognize sporting body. Guys, who is a recognized sporting body? Example, BCCI, example, Indian Olympic Association, they are recognized sporting body. When they provide services to each other, let's say I, BCCI provides some services to Indian Olympic Association, that is exempt. And when you provide services to a recognized sporting body, example, your MSD, your MS Dhoni, one of my favorite cricketers, when you are providing services to a recognized sporting body, even that will be exempt. Yes, who all will be exempt? I'll give you a shortcut. All the people who are on the ground. Players, yes. Then umpires, yes. Then referees, yes. Then coaches, yes. And then team managers, yes. I'll repeat, all the people on the ground when they provide services like players, like Amazoni, umpires, referees, coaches and team managers. But what about selectors? What about commentators when they provide services that will be taxable? Only this is exempt. Now that we're done with this, let's see this. Please read and please answer this question. Guys. Very, very interesting question, slightly different as well. Try and do this guys. An individual acts as a referee in a football match organized by a sports authority of India. So this is exempt. He has also acted as a referee in another charity football match organized by a local sports club in lieu of a lump sum payment. Guys, organized by a local sports club will be taxable. Only if it's recognized sporting body, then it will be exempt. So the first one is exempt, the second one is not. Next guys, over to you all, the fifth question. This is on performance by an artist, Ahana Kapoor. Please tell me whether it will be taxable or not. Over to you all. Taxable, excellent. RXL Private Limited manufactures a beauty soap with a brand name Forever Young. Ahana Kapoor, as a brand ambassador, performed up to 120 in a classical dance. Guys, classical dance is okay, 1 lakh 20 is okay, but she's a brand ambassador, that is the problem, and hence this will be taxable. Next, guys, over to you all, discuss the GST payable at 18% with respect to each of the following independent service provided by the registered persons. The first one, guys, please answer for the first one. Yoga camp, it is exempt. It's a registered trust. Amount charged by business correspondent for rural branch, again exempt. Next, amount charged by cord blood bank for preservation of stem cell, again exempt. Amount charged by service provided by selectors to a recognized sporting body, very tricky guys. Are the selectors on the ground? No, so this is taxable. So those shortcuts are really helpful. Everyone on the ground that is exempt, otherwise taxable. Examine whether GST guys on the ground are coaches, umpires, players uh, and also team managers on the ground, remember. Examine whether GST is exempted in the following independent cases. Guys, over to you all first and the second, read it and tell me what will be the answer. The first one. Private transport operator to scholar boys higher secondary school in relation to transportation of students to and from the school. This is TCS. This is exempt. Next. Services provided by way of vehicle parking to general public in a shopping mall. Have you seen this guys? No. So this is taxable. Next guys. Over to you all. The eighth one please.
guys why is gst payable on this give your comments as to whether any gst is payable on this yes guys if you are giving a vehicle to a state transport undertaking it is exempt only if it's more than 12 passengers this is only 8 and 10 passengers it should be more than 12 next over to all ninth one please read and determine whether the college is liable to pay gst guys it's a recognized educational institution and they are providing entrance exam so that is exempt completely yes next 10th one please read he is an agriculturist and he is taking fumigation services in the warehouse this will also be exempt next 11th question guys please read but please read carefully guys this next one no 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 please read carefully guys gayatri abhi nikita everyone asma read it carefully good purva acts as a team manager for indian sports authority a recognized sporting body which is perfectly okay till now it is exempt it is a tennis tournament organized by a multinational company guys this is a problem if it's a multinational company organizing it not a recognized sporting body then this will be taxable or remember only when you're providing services to a recognized sporting body if they have organized it then it will be taxable then it will be exempt next 12th question guys Bablu transporters transported relief material meant for victims of Kerala floods will there be any GST on this no because a rail doctor nam and ll doctor nam next guys kayan enterprises an event organizer provided breathing wall organizing a business exhibition in new delhi guys they feel it is not required to pay gst but guys in new delhi are they supposed to pay gst yes only exhibitions abroad are exempt Ekta Charitable Trust manages a temple in Rohini. It has given on rent a community hall for nine thousand five hundred. It is exempt. I love the pace at which you guys are answering. Amazing job. And ST Limited has given five trucks to a transporter. Is that exempt? Yes, completely exempt. Because any goods carriages to a transporter is completely exempt. Good job, guys. We have done the module questions. ICI will be surprised at how fast we have been able to do the, all the module questions. 15 questions did not even take us 15 minutes good job super super stuff happening here and we will continue this trend ahead as well but guys now we are done with all the chapters so now the next session in gst which are going to start in 2 minutes from now is going to be only and only about questions mcqs and trust me that's the problem people finish this much and they feel i know gst no you don't you don't know gst unless you start answering questions So in this next session that we're going to start in just about five minutes from now, we'll do MCQ booklet, we'll do past papers, RTPs, MTPs, whatever we can get our hands on, starting with the MCQ booklet in just five minutes from now. So watch out, let's do this and let's do this the best in our capabilities. Five minutes and we start. Thank you.